What's up, you beautiful bastards? Hope you're having a fantastic Friday. Welcome back to The Philip DeFranco Show. And if you are new here, here on Fridays, we do something a little bit different. I cover viewer requested stories from the week, stories we were going to put into the show but had to be cut for time or we never got to filming it so that we could be on time. Also, if you're wondering why I'm wearing this shirt, it's because I shot it on Thursday. And so with that said, let's jump into our first story of the day. And the first thing I want to talk about today, and this is a story that's been requested all week, is Sarah Hyland has come under fire. Sarah Hyland, of course, the actress of Modern Family fame. On Sunday night, Sarah Hyland posted a video for InStyle as part of this year's After Party. Party Elevator series. She was the first of many celebrities that participated this year, and while other videos from InStyle showed celebrities posing with their award, drinking champagne, even highlighting the Time's Up initiative, Sarah Hyland's was different. She posted the following video with the caption, 2018 starting off great, tip number one, when you drink alone, drink with John the Bellhop at InStyle Magazine Party. And this is the video. In the video, we see Highland drinking champagne. She's acting tipsy. She tries to leave the elevator, stumbles backwards into John the Bellhop's arm. And almost instantly, the criticism and hate was getting thrown her way. People saying it was inappropriate given the recent focus on sexual harassment. People saying that it was in poor taste because on Sunday, so many people at the Golden Globes were standing up for women being taken advantage of. Read a few. Really, in this climate, you show a young girl drunk and falling into the arms of an older man as doors closed to give her no escape? Tone deaf much? Why is she allowing a man to touch her inappropriately? Is this not going against what the night stands for? But we also saw those rushing to her defense. One user asking, what about it was poor timing? It would have been inappropriate if she was dragged back into the elevator or doing something against her will. Clearly not the case. It was a cute video. People need to stop trying to make everything offensive. Others calling it harmless. Island's only response to the criticism thus far was a tweet where she wrote, hashtag John the Bellhop is a very nice old man, FYI, completely sober. And I will say personally, I land on the side of this is offensive. Like, I pride myself on trying to see where other people are coming from, putting myself in someone else's shoes, and then, and then viewing the situation. Like, I just went back to the video, and, and it's amazing to me that this story has, has continued throughout this week, getting new coverage. User Jenny Z 2013 writing, This is so trashy, and I cannot believe you haven't taken it down yet. What in the world would make you think that you doing exactly what we are blamed for doing all the time would be funny? So many young women look up to you, and this is what you find funny? You are not funny at all. If I was already angry in general, I could make myself furious about this video. Like, if I really wanted to, I could get I could get angry at Sarah Hyland for treating John the Bellhop like an object. This guy, who's definitely a real bellhop and not an actor, is being used like a prop. He's just trying to do his job. Sarah Hyland's using him like a bookshelf. She then steals his property and she would have gotten away with it too if she didn't stumble backwards. Backwards into the man she just robbed and used as an object. And I think in general there is a reason to be outraged about many things in our society. Many of the things that, that are trying to be addressed by so many movements right now. But when you waste, and I really do believe it's waste your energy hating on a situation that, like this. I think it's a goofy, stupid video. When, when, when you waste so much energy on that and, and it takes you away from the real causes, I think, that you honestly do care about. I don't think it helps your cause and I think it takes away from people taking you seriously. But, of course, that's my opinion and, and I'll pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts around this? Then, let's talk about a viewer requested story. People asked me to respond to Polygon's article. PewDiePie is using Logan Paul's drama to repair his own reputation. Polygon just doing what they do best and somehow making a story about PewDiePie. And it goes into commentary about how Felix, who initially came up as a massive gaming YouTuber, is now often a commentary YouTuber. And then they write, but PewDiePie is also using his React videos as a way, joking or not, to argue that he should be granted the same level of immunity that he feels Logan Paul has been given. PewDiePie saying, it seemed like I gotten a lot more shit for a lot less. And like I said, I don't think he should have any sort of repercussion or whatever from YouTube, but at the same time, hashtag bring back scare PewDiePie. And it ultimately closes, as PewDiePie continues to help YouTube profit from the worst behavior of its biggest stars, he keeps the cycle of fame that got us and him here in the first place. And I skimmed the explanation of the article. You can go, I'll link to it down below. What I would say is a few things. One, PewDiePie has been a commentary channel for a while now. It's just inherently interesting to a lot of people to see what one of the largest YouTubers in the world thinks on something, especially if it's around the community. Two, the headline, he's using this drama to repair his own reputation. No, I don't see that as what he's doing. I think he's commenting on the treatment of another YouTuber that's in a similar, I would argue, a worse situation. And how at the time he recorded that video, it seemed like he was getting so much less shit. Unlike Felix at that time, Logan Paul was still part of Google Preferred ads. And many, including myself were drawing comparisons to the treatment of Felix and Logan. And the third thing of kind of blaming PewDiePie for talking about this and keeping it relevant and giving people more subscribers because he's talking about you it. You could easily make that argument about when Polygon or any other news site talks about a messed up situation. When you talk about it, whether it's in a good light or a bad light, you are bringing this person's face to people that had not seen it yet. And Matt Pat made a video about this the other day and, and really hit it on the head. When all these news websites jump on the outrage train and then they embed the video of the thing that is so 
horrible and wrong. Because of YouTube's algorithm, it makes it far more likely that the video is going to go to top trending on YouTube, and then more people become aware. Everyone is a part of that problem. But in general, I just felt like it was a kind of pointless article. But there you go, that's my response. And then let's talk about the update around that Louisiana teacher situation. So we talked about it earlier this week, but on Monday night, the Vermilion Parish school system had a meeting where they were discussing a new contract for their superintendent. The contract included a $38,000 raise for the superintendent, and some people had issue with that. Dacia Hargrave was recognized to speak before and after the vote took place. When she was recognized after, she was told her comments were out of order. And then while the superintendent was speaking to her, she was removed by an officer. Once out of the room, there is a scuffle, and the officer forcibly arrests Hargrave. Why? What are you doing? Stop resisting. I am not. Stop you just resisting. pushed me to the floor. Sir, hold on. I am way smaller than you. And she ended up being charged with remaining after being forbidden and resisting an officer. She was bonded out. The school board said they're not going to press charges. Yesterday, the Louisiana Association of Educators posted a video from Hargrave where she thanks the public for their support and urges people to speak out. And I'd like to thank my community, my students, my fellow coworkers and educators of uh, it was a huge deal that you not only messaged me, you were black in support of me, you shared things on social media, you got vocal. And that is the most important thing. So please don't let the conversation in with me, please. Go to your local school board meetings, speak out, be vocal. Hargraves also told the media that she wants an apology from the marshal and the superintendent, saying he's our leader. He's the top person in this school board, and ultimately he was speaking and he was interrupted like I was. He should have stopped that. She also explained what happened off camera. In the video, we see that she's leaving. Then the next thing we know, she's being slammed down on the ground. She said that as she walked towards the door, she turned her head and asked, why am I being asked to leave? Adding, before I finish the question, he cuffed my left hand, grabbed my right hand down, and that's when I was on the floor and I started yelling, what are you doing? Now, as far as the note of Hargrave getting an apology, I, I don't know about the superintendent, I don't know about the police officer. But one person she's definitely not going to get an apology from is the board president. The board president, Anthony Fontana, did a phone interview and, and he had this to say about the issue. Everybody wants to side on pay. Oh, the poor little woman, she got thrown out well. She made a choice. She could have walked out. And nothing would have happened. Then in a separate comment, adding, She was interrupting the board meeting. She wouldn't allow that to happen in a classroom, and now she's going to pull that stunt? A board member was getting ready to speak when she cut into him. That's when the officer acted. I think he acted properly. Okay, so there are a few problems all around. One, I want to say, Anthony Fontana, you, sir, are a cunt. Oh, the poor little woman. Oh, good, someone that has power being dismissive. Two, the note of she wouldn't allow that in a classroom, I, I have a feeling that her middle schoolers probably wouldn't be forcibly arrested by someone. Especially three, when she was having a back and forth with someone on the board after having just been recognized. And so where we are right now, the governor of Louisiana has said this is a very unfortunate situation, saying there's going to be an investigation. Also conducting an investigation, you have the ACLU, along with the Louisiana Association of Educators. And so to Anthony Fontana and any of the other dipshits on that board that agree with Fontana, I have this to say. It's not about her being a woman. It's about there being a person trying to speak on an unjust situation. In a situation where there are many allegations of corruption. You have someone trying to be peaceful and engage in this democracy and they get shut down by law enforcement. And it's just a disgusting abuse of power. Then let's talk about shithole gate. Literally no one else is calling it that. I just wanted to say shithole gate. According to the Washington Post, Thursday in the Oval Office when lawmakers floated the idea of restoring protections for immigrations from Haiti, El Salvador, and African countries, this is part of a bipartisan immigration deal. Trump reportedly said, according to multiple sources, why are we having all these people from shithole countries come here? Trump then suggesting that the United States should instead bring more people from countries like Norway, whose prime minister he met with on Wednesday. Wednesday. The president then suggesting he would be open to more immigrants from Asian countries because they help the United States economically. Then saying, why do we need more Haitians? Take them out. The Associated Press also reported on this. And soon after, the White House responded to this report saying, certain Washington politicians choose to fight for foreign countries. President Trump will always fight for the American people. The president will only accept an immigration deal that adequately addresses the visa lottery system and chain migration, two programs that hurt our economy and allow terrorists into our country. And then there's some more stuff, but none of it's denying the comment. And the statement goes on, but if you paid attention, at no point do they say the President of the United States did not say this. They don't, and the fact is, most people that heard this news went, 
Yeah, he probably said that. And I mean both people that dislike Trump and people that love Donald Trump. The people that dislike Donald Trump saying, see, just another example, he's bigoted, some saying he's racist. The people that like Donald Trump saying, hey, he's not politically correct and those places are shitholes. Right, you saw that argument from Fox News to the Donald. This statement resonates with a good chunk of Donald Trump's base. It doesn't really move the needle. And, and Donald Trump had the chance to quickly deny it. He was tweeting while this was on all the news stations, while the White House was getting press inquiries, while it was trending on Twitter, which we know he was on. But then finally this morning, Donald Trump tweeted and denied the accusation, saying the language used by me at the DACA meeting was tough, but this was not the language used. What was really tough was the outlandish proposal made a big setback for DACA. Never said anything derogatory about Haitians other than Haiti is obviously a very poor and troubled country. Never said take them out. Made up by Dems. I have a wonderful relationship with Haitians. Probably should record future meetings. Unfortunately, no trust. So it appears that he's denying that he specifically said shithole countries. He denies saying anything derogatory about the Haitians, but if you really pay attention to that initial claim. The claim was that he said, take Haiti out. And the shithole country's comment was about African nations in general. But for the most part, it appears the president's playing his greatest hits and he's claiming fake news. And in response to that claim, Senator Dick Durbin, who attended the meeting, said that Donald Trump is lying. And here's what he said this morning. As Senator Graham made his presentation, the president interrupted him several times with questions. And in the course of his comments, uh, said things which were hate-filled, vile, and racist. To no surprise, the president started tweeting this morning, denying that he used those words. It is not true. He said these hate-filled things, and he said them repeatedly. And then he went on when we started to describe the immigration from Africa that was being protected in this uh, bipartisan measure. That's when he used these vile and vulgar comments, calling the nations they come from shitholes. The exact word used by the president, not more, not just once, but repeatedly. We also saw a response from Representative Mia Love, a Republican from Utah, saying the president's comments are unkind, divisive, elitist, and fly in the face of our nation's values. The president must apologize to both the American people and to the nations he wantonly maligned. And Representative Mia Love herself is a child of Haitian immigrants. We also saw a U.S. representative being summoned to explain Trump's comment to the Haitian government. We also saw Haiti's U.S. ambassador condemn the comments, saying he believed they were based on stereotypes, adding either the president has been misinformed or he is miseducated. Educated, adding Haitians fought along U.S. soldiers in the Revolutionary War and we continue to be great contributors to American society. Eba Kalando, a spokeswoman for the African Union, saying, The African Union Commission is frankly alarmed at statements by the President of the United States when referring to migrants of African countries and others in such contemptuous terms. Considering the historical reality of how many Africans arrived in the U.S. during the Atlantic slave trade, this flies in the face of all accepted behavior and practice. And that's something I want to hit on. There were some people defending the comments, saying he was commenting on the places, not the people. And to me, that seems like a really weird argument. Like if I was having a party and I was in inviting people from New York and Boston, and at one point I was like, I don't, why do we have to take people in from that shithole Boston? Since it seems like it would be the people that would be coming, it is a commentary on the people as well. Especially then when you add, why can't we get more people from New York, AKA Norway? Once again, since you're taking the people, it does seem like a commentary on the people, not just the place. I feel like that's something that's getting lost in a lot of the debate. People are just saying, well, the place is bad. In the context of, this is a conversation about immigration and people coming to the United States, it's about the people. And for me personally, whether the president said it or not, and to me, it really does appear that he said this or something very, very close to it. A lot of people are now openly calling those places shitholes. Despite Trump's now denial, you still have the Tommy Larens and Ann Coulters of the world going, no, yeah, yeah. If they aren't shithole countries, why don't their citizens stay there? Let's be honest, call it like it is. Ann Coulter adding, okay, yes, Trump shouldn't call them shithole countries. A little respect is in order. They are shithole nations. And there are many people of that mindset being very vocal about it. So even if the president of the United States didn't say it, a ton of Americans now are. And on that note, to the international community, I want to say Donald Trump is my president, but he does not speak for me.